Welcome, folks, to Great Hymns of the Faith. My name is John Frazier. I'm your host. Great to have you with us today. We're going to begin the program with a hymn composed by a young man at the tender age of, you ready for this, 15 years. He was 15 years old when he wrote this hymn. The date was 1623. It's a hymn that you're going to be familiar with. I know that. But just as you sing this hymn, hum it to yourself or the next time you sing it in church, just think, it was a young boy, 15 years old, who wrote the hymn. His name was John Milton. Now, rather than tell you the name of the hymn that he wrote, I'm just going to play it for you, okay? Maybe you already know what it is. Take a few guesses. Edward Mote, in the year 1834, penned the words to this hymn. The music was by William B. Bradbury. Its hymn is called, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Sometimes you'll find the title of the hymn being, On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand. Either way, enjoy it. Jesus, God, and 
seeing that she wrote close to 8,000 hymns, it's no wonder that we have her on as often as we do. And of course, I'm speaking of Fanny Crosby. She's the author of the hymn that I would like to share with you now, and it's called He Hideth My Soul. Taken perhaps from Exodus 33, verse 22. I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Is Jesus my Lord a wonderful Savior to me? He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock where rivers of pleasure I see. Is Jesus my Lord? He taketh my burden away. He holdeth me up, and I shall not be moved. He giveth me strength as my. Thirsty land 
hand and covers me there. He covers me. James Edmonston, in 1821, composed our next hymn for the children of a London orphanage. Imagine that. Someone composes a hymn for the little children in the orphanage. What hymn do you suppose it will be? Perhaps it has something to do with Psalm 48, verse 14. He will be our guide even to the end. Wow, the hymn is called Lead Us. Lead Us, Heavenly Father. The author of this hymn authored a number of great hymns of the faith. No, it's not Fanny Crosby. Rather, it's Isaac Watts, who in the year 1719 composed the words to the hymn, Jesus Shall Reign. And folks, this has got to be one of my favorites. I hope that you will enjoy it as well. Shall wax and wane no 
folks, have you ever noticed that sometimes hymns that we sing in church, to us familiar hymns, but all of a sudden we notice that some words and even some phrases have been changed. And, you know, the danger in this is that sometimes you can change the meaning of the hymn, the theology of the hymn. Wow, be very careful uh, with that. But this is not something that's new. One who wrote not quite as many hymns as Fanny Crosby, but a good many, uh, at least 6,000 hymns, was none other than Charles Wesley. Let me tell you what Wesley, what his feelings were when people in his day and his dates, by the way, are 1707 to 1788, used to change some of the words in his hymns and those hymns of his brother John. He writes, I beg leave to mention a thought which has been long upon my mind and which I should long ago have inserted in the public papers had I not been unwilling to stir up a nest of hornets. Many gentlemen have done my brother and me, though without naming us, the honor to reprint many of our hymns. Now they are perfectly welcome to do so, provided they print them just as they are. But I desire that they would not attempt to mend them, for they are really not able. None of them is able to mend either the sense or the verse. Therefore, I must beg of them these two favors, either to let them stand just as they are, to take things for better or worse, or to add the true meaning in the margin or at the bottom of the page, that we may no longer be accountable either for the nonsense or for the doggerel of other men. Wow, that happens so much today, folks. The hymn that I want to share with you of Charles Wesley is called Love Divine, All Loves Excel. Christian soldiers. 
was composed by Sabine Baring Gould. The year, probably somewhere around 1864. Now, it was composed for a group of children who were taking part in a very special festival, school festival, as they marched from one school to another. And Sabine, not being able to come up with a hymn that was available at that time, decided to compose a new hymn. And so Onward Christian Soldiers was composed for children. Wow. Here's a more familiar hymn that we often hear children sing. Enjoy it. Sing along. i 
God bless. Hope to see you next week.